What's up, everyone? My name is Donji, and this is Avi. Hello, everyone. How's it going? And uh, so we both go, this is a podcast where we both cover nano topics, and I am a product designer. Avi is our engineer. And uh, it's mostly me asking him technical questions that, uh, you know, I just want to know myself. And he can pretty much answer any question about nano. He's practically invented it. Uh, Colin LeMay, he was his uh, pseudonym, right? Yeah, yeah, other than the fact that he has a face and a picture and has been on other podcasts and like don't listen to the fake news guys fake news but okay. yeah it's just an expensive skin suit i wear <laughs> yeah pretty much so yeah he can answer everything about nano uh, with 100 percent accuracy yeah guaranteed not a single thing will be wrong no uh, no you're right so um covering something today we have uh this guy, Blockchain Boy, he just uh, made this cool video on TikTok. Uh, I think all of us shills should go upvote these social media uh, people who are supporting Nano. Bitcoin's original purpose was not for what it's used for today. Today, Bitcoin is used for store of value. It's very expensive, very slow, and it makes peer-to-peer -peer payments very impractical. That's where Nano comes in. Nano is actually the only cryptocurrency that is decentralized, instantaneous and has zero fees it uses something called block the only cryptocurrencies that's decentralized i just want to point that out i mean you know that's a strong claim lattice technology to achieve this and it's pretty damn awesome if you haven't tried it out for yourself i encourage you to download natrium uh, and give it a shot because once you use nano there's no going back but one of the valid criticisms of Nano is that it's particularly susceptible to spam attacks, or at least it was. One of their latest innovations V22. is spam resistance while maintaining their fee list architecture. I believe Nano could reach mass adoption. Big Agreed. I mean, that's why we're doing this, right? Yep, that's yeah. why we're doing this. Um, so we have uh, one thing that we want to cover jump into right away is one of the things he mentioned which is the truly decentralized part so we are seeing some validity to this statement i mean compared to proof of work coins in that a new bill in new york uh claims to or aims to halt bitcoin mining for three years until its environmental impact can be assessed so one thing that i kind of wanted to bring up which is what does it mean to be decentralized i mean you don't want to rely on central entities to function and if one of your, if you rely on central entities to function, uh, like for example, let's say you had a, I don't know, a mining thing the size of a Tesla mega factory, and then it gets shut down, all of a sudden fees skyrocket, right, uh, in Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fees wouldn't necessarily skyrocket per se, but it would be just harder to move stuff around or. It, yeah, it would just be more of a pain uh, to get stuff because basically uh, the way it's set up is that like people are going to be competing for the hash rate because they want the rewards. So obviously it would it would need to scale until the amount of rewards equals the profit that they could have earned by mining those rewards. So as long as the costs are less than that, it's something that they'll continue to do. But uh, basically for like any entity that can be shut down because of economies of scale you need to put all that stuff in one place right otherwise like it's just harder to have 30 million asics or like a huge tesla mega factory of a mining facility to be spread out right so it's much easier to like go there as like a government or something and just like be like yeah yeah we're gonna shut this down now and then and then you lose like a significant amount of the hash power which removes the security from the network and that's the actual risk it's that because what's securing the network is the fact that there's competition for the hash rate but if part of the competition for the hash rate suddenly disappears for some reason leaving only certain players to have a majority of the hash rate at that point mm -hmm. then they can just decide to send everyone's money to them by just saying that those are the valid transactions and like doing it i mean Kind of, but they can just invalidate transactions or validate ones that are like incorrect whenever they feel like because they basically control what's on the blockchain and what's not on the blockchain. So they can like force it to go in whichever direction they want. And that is like a significant risk. 
And the only thing that's balancing that out in proof of work coins is the fact that everybody wants some of the rewards. But if it's much easier to remove some of the rewards, then you know you basically lose the security portion of the proof of work system, which is no bueno. Yeah, especially if governments can also shut them down. Yeah, uh, or like natural disasters, or like a power line being cut in one place, like you could significantly uh, prevent a large portion of the network from being able to do the mining operations. And then you're basically, you know, giving up a whole bunch of block rewards for that group. And then that just will leave the hash power being controlled by the remaining entities. And yeah. as the uh, as the hash rate increases, uh, having smaller and smaller hash amounts also becomes less profitable because like you running your own GPU rig in your basement, like off of your gaming PC, uh, probably won't earn you any money and instead cost you quite a bit to keep that running all the time, right? So it becomes less rewarding to do small time mining operations because you'll never compete with the Tesla mega factory. So yeah. you'll never get a block reward. So you're never going to do mining on a small scale, leaving only the large scale players. And then if any one of these large scale players goes down, the security for the network basically goes to shit. So it's uh, it's definitely not a system that promotes long term sustainability when it comes to like keeping security up and being decentralized, simply because of like how it functions. Uh, economically that's mm -hmm. what the economic incentives are and uh yeah and before we jump to our next topic uh if you guys like these videos uh hit the subscribe button and the like button oh no it, it helps us a lot you're doing the thing already yeah we're doing the thing already it's only the third one and today's sponsor is saint augustina you can't you can't just say they're the sponsor i no no, no they're sponsoring I, my wallet's sponsoring the beer which is making our podcast run right I now. I see. Yeah. It's a so. it's a German beer. So, cheers. Cheers. Uh, uh, <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Um, so, next tab. Uh, comment your favorite YouTuber or blogger who likes to talk oh, wow. about yeah. him. Oh, wow. Oh, I wow. wonder who that would be. I wonder who that would be. It's us, right? It De be definitely us. us. Definitely us. If it's not us, I don't know why you're here. Um, this other topic I wanted to cover real quick. It's not not having to do with Nano, but it's having to do with our first episode where we talked about how Magic the Gathering would be dope for NFTs. And boom, Hasbro CEO says NFTs are being considered for Magic the Gathering, other franchises. Our first prediction on this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Donji, I, I need to apologize. Like, uh, I said that it wouldn't be in uh, Hasbro's or Wizards' best interest to do this because, you know. Uh, but, you see, they're they're all about the NFTs. It's, I guess I guess they were all about the it, NFTs. It's, they're going back to their roots of, you know, collectibles. I, I suppose that is what they are going with, and that's, like, a good sign, I guess. Uh, we're one step closer to having, like, a killer app on uh, the EVM, I guess. But, yeah. Uh, the question is, will they go with Solana or will they go with Cardano or Ethereum? They'll probably Yet go with Ethereum. Probably with Ethereum. Uh, simply because of ETH2. Like, existing market share. Yeah, but like... But Solana is actually fully functioning with the smart contracts and the proof of stake. They have partial proof of stake. Uh, from what I recall about Salon, I haven't looked into the project recently. Uh -huh. They still don't have like the method for anybody to receive rewards from being a validator. I see. Like you need to be part of their beta program, and in order to join that, you need to like submit your identity to them. Oh, I see. So if you want to get paid for being a validator, you need to do that. Otherwise, anybody can just join the network. But not received. so they're semi-centralized right now. Yeah, semi-centralized. So that would still need to be rectified, I guess. Uh, it wouldn't matter probably to a corporation, but uh, like they probably have a lot of different people. We're Rest gonna have to do more research into Wax as well. Yeah. Uh, trying to figure out who who are these NFT players um, might be interesting. 
I really wish Nana could somehow be integrated into this ecosystem because. I I mean, kind of, but like also, it's one of the best portions of Nano is that it's uh, focused. You know. Focused. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It would be hard pressed to say it's trying to do everything uh, and then be good at it. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see our next tab we got here. Ah, Nano Royale, a very cool game where you can um, basically play games to earn uh, Nano. And they have a Nano Faucet. Uh, this is the Nano Faucet game. Or you can bet money, too. Of course you can bet money. Of course you can bet money. Uh, if there's anything that we have with option into, it's uh, losing money to various gambling sites. Or other players. I mean, there's probably players here. I wonder if anyone's making bank off this game. That mm -hmm. would be really cool. Wait until the botting crisis begins on Nano Royale when people make Nano Royale bots. Uh... Avi, don't give away our plans. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but this is, uh, have you won any games yet? Uh, I've, I've won like a couple games. How much Nano did you win? Uh, not much. I, I've definitely lost money on this game, so. Uh... <laughs> I don't know, not very good at it. I think all of your gambling ventures in Nano have not worked out. Uh, my, yeah, I can only do investments, it seems. So. I see. You, you lack the you lack the skills. Uh, or just the luck, probably. The, this game is all skill. Obviously. I mean, it's a lot of skill. It's basically moving rock, paper, scissors. Yes. So if you're a red bubble, then, and you collide against a red, then you win. It's kind of like... Pokemon, where it's like you have uh, Charizard, Venusaur, Bulbasaur. I mean, I know this is really outdated because there's probably like a new trio that's like way more advanced. I don't know. They keep bringing back the the originals every single game. So people still know who the OGs are. So that's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a tournament tomorrow. We're, we're filming this on Saturday, May 8th, so Saturday, uh, Sunday, May 9th, there's a tournament, which so is kind of cool. So all negative one of you will see this video because it'll probably go out on Monday. Uh, this is going to go out today. <laughs> probably. So, yeah, if you're hearing about it too late, um, there'll probably be another tournament. I don't know. Uh, one question I did have this week is, uh, what is the difference? So there's, I, we keep on hearing about XRP and Stellar Lumens, uh, Ripple and Stellar, and they're kind of similar in that they're trying to go for global payments. Well, they're kind of similar because, like, they are they were made by basically the same guy. Or uh, the CTO from Ripple left. No, no, Stellar Lumens and Nano are, I mean, and Ripple are similar, not yeah. with Nano, though. Yeah, not with Nano. Yeah. yeah. But they're both similar in that they are payment systems, right? Uh -huh. uh, that's their, like, main selling point uh, between these two and Nano, right? Uh, but the difference is more in, I guess, tokenomics, and then also how the network is structured. Uh, Stellar and Ripple are both centralized to various extents. Uh, Ripple is like a for-profit company, so they're also currently being sued by the SEC for issues relating to uh, like their ICO, mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, it's a it's a bit of a mess, but but yeah. So they both like use a, a varying method to uh, a like proof of stake. Well, it's kind of like proof of stake, but they uh, they basically go through and they validated some of the primary nodes. So Ripple like partners with some large cor uh, like banking institutions, I guess you could say, but it's various financial institutions, uh, and then gives them the ability to like be validation nodes on their network. So uh, they're basically earning money from hosting the network and then giving out these licenses for doing the transfers. On... And there's transaction fees. Yeah, there's transaction fees on both. But uh, they're Are we talking about pennies? Dollars? Well, I mean, the idea is that they would adjust the transaction fees so it would always be affordable. Uh, in like the sub penny range, you know, uh, like point oh 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 one. I think it's like one times ten to the negative six ripple or dollars. No, uh, one times ten to the negative six XLM currently. And or, as far uh, as tokenomics go, like, what are the what 
what does charging these fees let them do? Obviously, it helps them with spam mitigation, um, but we're about to fix that for Nano too. Um, but what is there any what what things can their network do because they're built differently that Nano is unable to do? Uh, I mean, there isn't a whole lot because, like, in terms of speed, they're similar. Like, uh, we've used both of these like for their purposes. I did not just spill beer on my computer. Uh, it definitely looks that way. Oh my god. <laughs> I just had a mini heart attack, guys. So sorry about the... <laughs> Alright, anyways. Alright, so, uh... So shall I clap? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just as you were saying about Ripple. Okay, so basically, yeah. Uh, in terms of like settling time, it's about the same because they can trust that the validators are going to be good actors on Ripple because they're companies who they know and have a reputation and they validated it. So everything's permissioned and like they're trusted entities. So they can like be a bit more slapshot when it comes to solving the Byzantine consensus issue, right? So they don't need to worry about bad actors so much, which means that they don't have to be as uh, intensive when it comes to their consensus method. So basically, they can have similar like settling times as Nana would have, despite uh, not using like the same sort of asynchronous block lattice technology. So, you know, that's that's about on par. And they just have the transaction fees because they're a company who needs to make money for the most part. They could probably even remove the transaction fees, but then then they wouldn't make money. And that would be kind of damaging for a for-profit company, you know? And then how? what are the concerns for the the nano organization, the, cent, the not the central organization, but the nano um, dot org, you know, being nano able foundation. to... Huh? The nano foundation. The nano foundation. Well, what... What are, how are they going to continue to fund the project if they're not making fees? Uh, you know, they're probably not going to be able to continue to fund the project if they're not making fees. Uh, when the dev like fund runs out, I'm not too sure what the long-term plan is. I think what the goal is, is to follow the more typical FOSS pipeline for these sorts of things, kind of like Apache or Mozilla, uh -huh. uh, like have, where basically what you would do is you would start the project uh, like with some money that you've collected from various institutions to like make some sort of tool or make some sort of like software and have that be open source. As you build a community around that, that software, uh, you bring in developers from the open source community to be contributors and maintainers to that. And then basically what you would do for the rest of the pipeline is after you run out of money to do active development, you would just sort of leave it in the open source space and it would just be kept up to date by whoever the current maintainer is and the rest of the So the what about doing like a Red Hat thing? Because uh, Red Hat is a, they, they're, they're an open source company. They work for Linux or they, they make builds of Linux and well, they sell those to companies. They, yeah, but they, they don't sell Linux itself really. Yeah. What they sell is they, they sell like service. Mm -hmm. Like the services will maintain these things for you uh, so you don't have to do your IT. Do you think there could be money in helping people build custom nodes? But I mean, in the way that I would normally conceptualize Nano's long term like role in the ecosystem is that it's going to be kind of like the HTTP of payments, right? I think I've mentioned yeah. this before. So it's uh, it's like a protocol level, uh, like kind of technology that would just be there for the purposes of being used as like a, a default baseline for every time you want to send something to somebody, you would just uh, use this nano protocol and it would just follow the same conventions as set up. So maybe at a certain point it will be crystallized to some degree where there won't be a whole lot of changes that need to happen on a regular basis and all you would need to do is really solve like any glaring security faults and the active development wouldn't be as necessary because the like basic standard for the nodes would work all right. And then you would have sort of like a heterogeneous equilibrium where 
maintaining the node software could be done by any number of parties, but they would all use the same like base nano protocol, like whatever version it ends up on. Uh, that would be like nano standard, mm -hmm. like V one point seven or whatever, and it would just be basically a default set of rules for how to send messages and how to receive them in a way that would guarantee like a secure, fearless way of transferring value from one location to another location. And uh, yeah, so when it's, when it's like that, like the node software doesn't matter too much at that point, right? Uh -huh. Because like after adoption, anybody can write node software. As yeah. long as they follow the same protocol and communicate on the same channels, like it doesn't. But you matter. could have a central organization, not central organization, but you could have the Nana Foundation make money by, because they're experts in the technology, continue to be able to give consulting. Uh, I mean, maybe they could do that, uh, but I don't know, like, I don't think that's their their goal necessarily. What about Banano? I did hear that Banano was holding about fifty percent of their coin or something like that. To then give back to the nano devs. I didn't hear anything like that. They you are said holding, something like that. No, they are holding fifty percent of the, the banana coin, uh, but that's because they are still in the process of distributing it. So they're going to distribute all of it. Well, I mean, the intention is that they're going to distribute all of it. They I, probably have like five secret wallets with like a billion nano in it. In I banana. mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> but, Wouldn't you uh, be able to hide secret wallets? I mean. As long as nobody knows it's yours, that's already hidden. Don't they have to state how much is in total circulation? Well, yeah, like, but that's just you add all of the wallets. It's okay. listed, like in the database, every account. No one's actually money, going through there. all these coins and checking who owns what. Well, I mean, you would need to associate with an individual, and like one yeah. individual can have multiple wallets. Right, right. So they're they're distributing it. They're going to distribute all of Banano, but. I mean, hopefully. <laughs> Into multiple wallets of their own pocket. <laughs> I mean, probably not. I don't want to slander uh, the Banano team for their meme coin, but you know. Well, see, the, what bugs me is that Nano has only taken, like, what, 2% of the coin for their foundation? I think it was 5% at the beginning. 5%? Yeah. And then there's, like, things like Banano, which just are still making a lot of money, but just have a big chunk more. It's very well possible that the Banano devs could have a lot more money than the Nano devs. That would be a funny situation, uh, considering that there aren't, like, really Banano devs. I know. It's like, the Banano creators, like, could have way more money than the Nano creators. I mean, it may be in Banano's best interest to keep funding Colin and friends. And Th the that's what the I'm Nano saying. Foundation like, team. Yeah. like... You know, because if you look at the prices of Nano and Banana, we're not talking trade, by the way. Um, but if you do look at the I prices, I think we're far enough into the video. I think they would have stopped watching the moment you spilled beer all over your beer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But if you look at the prices, Banana is highly tied to the price of Nano. Well, I mean, yeah, the community is like eighty percent overlap, you know. So yeah. So it's it would definitely be in their best interest to. Well, I mean, yeah, because they're not actively developing the software. So it's not like a fork fork. It's not like doing its own I will thing lose, on the first layer. I will actually be mad at Banano if the Nano Foundation runs out and they don't help it. Um, because that's pretty much the only threat to Nano I could see so far. Are they running out of money before it's done done? Or if, it's, if something else comes up and they need to tackle it, maybe it could be done, but like maybe some other type of hack thing happens or something, and then we need people at the front lines. I mean, they'll need to keep doing security things probably indefinitely, but I, yeah. the idea is that as it becomes like more popular, you will attract developers to work on the project because it's an open source project. Right. And at a certain point, like, that will be a self-sufficient ecosystem. Okay. Uh, it just takes a long time to get there. Uh, but once you once you reach the like inflection point, you can basically have the community work on the security fixes for at least the main version of the software. And even if the main version of the software like stops being updated because of whatever reason, like 
once the protocol has been more or less cemented into a particular version, uh, anybody can just rewrite the software in a, however they want in whichever method, as long as they follow the basic rules for how to pass messages around. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's doable. One thing that I do kind of want to bring up is just the marketing between um, XRP, I mean Stellar and Nano. So one thing is I really like this web page. I mean, it looks like it's nice. Um, but I kind of like how they put the design for developers portion up in center. And uh, one thing that I do take issue with the Nano is it's not as targeted at developers. Um, there's just not all that stuff front and center. And then I also think that one thing that's not... I, I, I think Nano should for should what's it called incorporate more of the wallets into their front page because one of the best parts is the ux of natrium at the in in the current yeah but natrium meta is technically a third party it's a third party yeah yeah but every single time you do hear someone onboard someone to nano it's always download natrium well that's because natrium is the best wallet currently available uh currently available yeah I mean, Not they didn't long. say that, or we nano, right? Yeah. So, you know, because those are either very easy to use or have the like, faucet automatically built in. So it's just simple to get people on board. Mm -hmm. um, so what is this Accept Nano app? Oh, uh, basically, it's a payment processor. It's just a payment processor that was posted on the subreddit like two weeks ago. Uh, we were supposed to talk about it, but then we didn't. Uh, but basically, like it will generate a specific QR code for a specific address with a specific dollar amount that they can just scan in and, and send it to you. So this is for requests? Uh, this is for like point of sale, basically. So you would run this on your like computer mm -hmm. and then have a second screen like at your like bakery or ice cream shop. And every time they would buy something, you would just type in the uh, equivalent amount in local currency. Be like, oh, it's five US dollars. It will do the conversion and make a QR code for them to scan with their, their phone. Uh, and then they send you the money. And then it registers that they've received the money. You've received the money, at least. And then you can hand them the good or service that you're providing them. Payments. Oh, it's showing all my transactions. Oh no, I feel naked. Well, uh, you are. You are naked now. Uh, 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 ignore all of that, people. <laughs> Let me post one of my seed wallets. Huh. But yeah, this is, uh, like, they do need to work on the U UI UX on this app a little bit. Yeah, it's very unclear, especially I don't like the first screen where it made you pick from this. Like, oh my god. I They don't even tell you, like, what's next to it. Like, all I see is aid, ifin, all, and, you know, it's, what is that? Well, these are all fiat currencies. They're all fiat currencies, but... Why is Nano one of them? In case you want to price things in Nano. Although at that point, you don't really need... I mean, you do kind of need a payment processor, like for physical goods, uh, just to keep track of... Okay, so does this thing, thing send you a receipt, or...? Uh, it sends you kind of a receipt, yeah. Like, I think it generates an intermittent wallet between you and them, and basically what it does is it will forward transactions from them to this middle wallet to you, and that way you can verify that for each transaction it goes through the middle wallet and then to you, which means that it basically goes through and can be verified that it's for this purpose mm -hmm. and was sent for this reason, uh, which is not something that you can do with Nano because there isn't a, uh, a thing. Hmm. Like, there aren't messages. So you can't, like, say, oh, yeah, uh, put this in the transaction ID or whatever because that's not uh, on 
the blockchain. So there need to be layer two solutions, and this is basically the layer two solution. Nice. They kind of made it look like Natrium. They definitely took the Natrium design uh, <laughs> like guidelines <laughs> and remade them for this app. It's not bad. I like it. But yeah, maybe fix the first list. So the customer scans and sends and pays using. Is there like an open in Natrium thing where you could like open a receive thing and it automatically opens that thing in Natrium with the send amount? Uh, yeah. I believe that's... there is. Uh, it wasn't. Well, I mean, you have to like register it on your app's QR code reader. Like you, it's the, the link on the QR code is just the address. Yeah. It, it's like nano colon slash slash nano address. And then you can also attach amounts and the uh, the other stuff. There's a lot of things you can add to that URL. Mm -hmm. I, for, I forget exactly what you can put on there. But uh, basically, if you have Natrium as like your default handler for the nano extension, uh, then it would just open up Natrium every time you would scan any QR code, whether or not it's a, whether or not you're currently logged in. Mm -hmm. One thing that I wanted to discuss was uh, Cardano Africa. Um, I think it's a really neat strategy how Cardano, instead of just doing what Ethereum's doing and marketing to the people who already have money using, um, you know, NFTs and stuff, uh, instead Cardano's starting by building a government back end for Africa. Yeah, uh, it's definitely probably a better solution. Nano is also doing that to a pretty good degree, especially in Africa and other like underserved communities, uh, like also Venezuela now too, uh, simply because like they have the most need and mm -hmm. the least amount of uh, available infrastructure, I guess. But you could say like functional infrastructure. They're the people who can actually start using it and it's going to add a lot of value because the alternatives aren't as there's not as much competition as for established. alternatives yeah yeah. yeah yeah and there's in america we have venmo in africa you don't necessarily have all of that infrastructure already built so yeah you could be bringing new infrastructure that's just like instantaneously better than everything else they could use in certain circumstances yeah and uh that also presents like a, a much easier like onboarding for them and the value proposition is also clear for them because like having money that you don't have direct control over is like worse in mm -hmm. those situations because of differing monetary policies across different states in africa and so far and so forth but basically what you can do is uh like really distribute things in a good way so yeah, Cardano's uh, uh, issue on here to give like identity for like tracking voting and like yeah all that stuff is very very interesting. Uh, and yeah, and it's also it's like hard for the government to collect taxes sometimes if you don't have everyone's identity and paperwork all you know locked away and secure. Um, it's harder to if you have identity on the black blockchain. It's harder for the government to there's it's harder for corruption to kind of run rampant if you kind of have everything recorded on who owns what and yeah it's easier to keep track of especially if you like enforce that it's required to be registered on this uh, yeah. for every sort of like transaction or even like during an election let's say you yeah. need to distribute election funds and all of this needs or to be done voting. or voting i don't think cardano will like fix the whole issue with blockchain voting i, I mean think identity is the first stage but i like, is the first stage and it, it, it's it's probably on the roadmap. I mean, it'd be very surprising if every aspect of government wouldn't be on there. Why Why bother with all of the other stuff? If I mean, yeah, if they put that on there, it would also, like, it's, it is on the roadmap for themselves, at least, uh, because the last stage of Cardano's development pipeline, I guess, would be putting on, like, governance or the internal props platform, which you can yeah. also extend to any other platform that's running on the same ecosystem. But see, I love how they're actually putting a lot of, they're building like a campaign for Africa. They have a, a you know, a two hour video and all of that. I would love to see some sort of, you know, like yeah, we're doing Venezuela and all that stuff, 
But when you say that, is it just through Wii Nano, or is there actually organized efforts? There's no, I mean, it's, unfortunately, uh, the way Nano is set up is, is more like, I guess you could say open source open source which means yeah. that everyone's sort of doing their own thing. Everyone's like not pulling in the same direction necessarily. There isn't like a consistent marketing push. Uh, it's more so, yeah, I think this is interesting. This is a possibility. I'm capable of adding to the community by doing these activities, and then they do those activities. Like there's lots of people who are making different sorts of like games or apps or like betting tools or like plugins for Unreal or Unity or like what have you. All of this stuff is just happening simultaneously across different solutions of people making different wallets. Mm -hmm. All this stuff is just happening like in all directions at the same time. As the community grows, people will probably like get in touch with one of these like edge points first before coming in contact with the main nano project at any point, uh, which is different from how Cardano's doing it. I mean, they are also very open sourcey, but like they have a much stronger focus and roadmap. Uh, I think that one of the things that Cardano did very well at the beginning, which is why they're valued as highly as they are now, is that they they put together all of the marketing materials and like set up like a long term plan. Like, marketing wise. Yeah. yeah. So so they know like this is what we're doing and roughly what quarter we're gonna be doing it in. Uh, and this is how we're gonna be setting up the whole ecosystem. And we're not gonna change that. But we're gonna like spend some of the dev money to I mean, like, constantly. To be fair, I don't materials. think HTTP, like when they were building that protocol, had like a you know super epic marketing campaign. Yeah, but that it's it's not the same. Uh, we're looking to be have Nano is looking to be more like in the background, like you know, I behind mean, the scenes, kind of running. It. They want to be the currency that runs things, but they they're less focused on like having the or the foundation itself be like a big thing. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what it is. At least from the like uh, the things I've heard. From also, the I think it's an innate difference between a smart contract currency and just a protocol okay. payment currency, which is their Cardano has to make deals with organizations to build on top of their platform in order for smart contracts to be of any value. So. Obviously, by attacking governments, not attacking governments, by, <laughs> by partnering, by invading countries, by invading, yeah, obviously by Cardano Africa is actually Cardano setting up a state in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but I think it's it's more important for the smart contract. All the smart contract players are building ecosystem. Like, ecosystem like Wax is working with the sports trading card companies to tops to get on their board and then yeah so like these sorts of smart contract platforms need killer apps you know because yeah. like they're running apps basically in order to do that you need to have people who are going to be creating something to run on your platform and have it be like the reason why you would use your platform yeah and nano's killer apps are gambling platforms well nano's, <laughs> <laughs> nano's killer apps are just you can send money without having to pay for it yeah, which is it, and that's that's the period. And then you do the gambling platforms, and then have me lose personally my money. Avi, you're funding Nano. I, I'm funding the people who are making these very terrible gambling apps that I really should. The real question <laughs> is, why aren't we making gambling apps? I I ask myself this daily. I'm like, you know, I could have a lot more Nano in my pocket. If I convinced other people to put it in my pocket, uh, yeah, I, I think that's really what we what we aren't doing. So next week we're gonna have like a live okay roulette. We're gonna put some QR codes on here, do like a YouTube live stream. You can like bet on which one of us will uh, win. Or even better, we'll set up a foundation where we'll do a gambling site. Half the money goes towards setting up uh, nano payment systems in. And giving away free nano faucets to Nigeria. All right. That 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 would be a gambling site I could get behind. Yeah, you know. Like you want to, and then the money that comes in, we could use to further build the organization and stuff like that. All right. Yeah. We could keep some for ourselves. Yeah. 
Deal. <laughs> Thanks for the idea, Avi. I guess we're doing it. Yes. Um, yeah, and then let's see. We have um, a banana post. So if someone is doing folding with banana, if you guys don't know what that means, it's, there's this protein folding site. Oh, well, it's folding at home. Folding at home. Yeah. Um, um, one of the things bananas is doing is taking over for, you know, good old Gridcoin from 2011 and uh, paying people for protein folding. Yeah, so it, it, you know, it, it helps out um, solving different disease, cancers, other things like that. Well, I mean, it's all sorts of different research things. It's very beneficial to all of like, bi biology. And this person's doing it with bananas. Yeah. They're turning bananas into banana. They are. I, I love this. This is probably one of my favorite um, projects I've seen so far in the cryptocurrency space. Um, hands, yeah, let's, let's give it up for uh, ASMR Auctioneer for, for doing this. That's a... Uh, it's, it's definitely like a high effort meme to produce one work unit every month. Yeah. Uh, which I don't think corresponds to one banana. I think it's like 500 something to get the minimum reward for banana. Yes, they're turning eight banana, eight bananas into five hundred banana. Other way around, eight bananas into one five hundred. Oh, into one five hundred. Props for them. <laughs> um, let's see. Also, I'm just showing over some other banana memes. Um, this brings up Dogecoin. Dogecoin is blowing up this week, and uh, well, it's been blowing up for like every day since. 420, I guess. Every day since 420. Um, but there was this one post. Let me see if I can find it. Kevin O'Leary um, said on Twitter that he thinks that Dogecoin is the future of payments. He says it's, it's awesome because you can actually use it and it's affordable to send. And I just... It really steams like me, and I think everybody else who's going to be watching this video and like knows about Nano to like hear anybody mention any other coin for like payments and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, this is the one. I mean, especially because people think like, oh wow, we can send like banana right now, and then, I mean, we can send uh, not banana, Dogecoin, yeah. and it's like. You know, once it reaches the scale of Bitcoin, it'll have the exact same problems. I mean, they didn't like fix any of the issues. They just like moved the numbers around, and they're gonna either have to move the numbers around again, uh, which you know it's not gonna be very likely to happen because they're gonna have the same issues, where there's gonna be like the big Dogecoin mining operations who want to keep things more under wraps, and there's also gonna be like the whole rest of the the thing. I don't know, man. Uh, I feel like most people are just doing it for the hype, you know? They don't like get in uh, necessarily understanding what the pros and cons are of the space and like where technology is at the current moment. But I guess you can't fault people for being new, you know? Uh, they'll come around in time, hopefully. Or be forever trapped as moon boys. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's unfortunate that the vast majority of people do not actually look at the technology behind it. But since this, this has actually been the complaint of nerds around the world um, since the beginning of time. Mm. Yeah. So, I think we just need to up our marketing game. I mean, that would definitely help. Uh, I think Kevin O'Leary has like a cameo or something. Uh, you can like force him to give you a message or like a video or something, right? Like, uh, oh, he does. Yeah, if you're willing to pay like twelve hundred dollars or something, you can make him say, "Nano is the best cryptocurrency because it's fast, fearless, and green." And you know, if he's forced to say those words in front of a camera, I think he will look into it at some point. I hope so. I hope so. So you know, if we if we had twelve hundred dollars to spare. Uh, that would be a thing to do. 
Yeah, we really need like a big celebrity to uh, Elon Musk. If you're watching this video, he's not. Please, he is not Please support video. Nano. I know. <laughs> He's definitely not watching this video. It's the internet. Anything's possible. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, this specific thing is not possible. And also, I don't think he'd, he'd go for it. Because he's already heavily invested in uh, other projects, I would assume. Uh -huh. And why would, you, why would you do that without first moving the price needle up by a good 500%? Yeah. Um, I, I don't, did we cover it last week? If we had two windmills, we could have the energy, uh, we could be... Carbon negative. Carbon negative. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. It is. We should be carbon negative. I don't understand why. Yeah, I don't know if it got cut off for last week while we were talking about uh, the tree project as well, but... Oh, we did. Yeah. What was the tree project again? Uh, it was like you could pay an animal to plant trees. I'm not sure if that's active now, though. Oh. But yeah, uh, basically with that plus this, you could tout it as being like carbon negative without having to do any real effort <laughs> at all. It's just because it's a very lightweight protocol, so it's not like going to take a whole lot of power to make a new transaction or even run the network. Yeah, you like I I feel like. Going back to the marketing thing, like if Nano just would have built into their marketing thing like a budget for buying two windmills, that could have been like the equivalent Africa play for Cardano. Like that would have been huge if they just used the profits from Nano to buy the windmills to be carbon neutral. Yeah, it would be good marketing, but it would also be very expensive in the long run, I, I would assume. In the long run? Cheap in the long run. Well, I mean, hopefully they would generate... I mean, obviously, they would generate income, the windmills, but you need to, like... You have to place the windmills in the right place, obviously. That's the issue. You need to buy the space, and then get the permits, and then get the windmills. Yeah. And it's, like, a, a multi-step process that's going to take a lot of time. And for two windmills, you would have to factor in all those additional costs into the thing of buying them, right? So if you have two turbines, you're going to have to deal with that. Yeah, being carbon, being carbon negative... But, you know, I don't think, when people buy Tesla cars, I think they, they're not buying it for the environment. They're buying it for the branding. Yeah, for the branding. So, uh, maybe it won't make that big of a difference in the end, uh, being environmentally friendly. And, like, if you take into account the life cycle cost of a Tesla car, it's not negative yet either. So, yeah, it's, you know, there's, you have to still make batteries which requires mining, and you have to still power the cars, which is not done through green sources yet, for the most part. Yeah. So, you know. Oh, so anyways, is there uh, anything else we needed to cover? Uh, I mean, that's basically the main points. I'm sure somebody will, like, complain to us. Uh, we read the comments, all four of them, and we know. That, uh, there's Rap Nano on some out there of the blockchains, uh, like on, uh, and uh, also I think Phantom is adding Rap Nano as well. There's a couple of other like places that are putting them on. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know that it would be good uh, overall, at least for interoperability with uh, the Wizards of the Coast <laughs> Magic the Gathering game. Yeah, I want to buy some Magic the Gathering cards with Nano. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a thing. You would just need to, like, get Rap Nano. Yeah. Convert that into the thing, and then transact that for cards. Well, anyways, if you guys have made it this far, thank you very much. And uh, please like and subscribe if you like our show. Um, and eventually we'll add, like, a, a wallet so you guys can tip, too. Uh, should we do that this week? Uh, I mean... I don't, I don't think we are at the well, I viewer will take count. point zero 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 one nano. Like I will take any nano I could get. We will take one raw. I'll uh, take a raw. A single raw. Yeah. So like, subscribe, and send us one raw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll post the the nano address in the description. I mean, I'm pretty sure one day that raw will be able to buy me a beer. So. I, uh, probably not. <laughs> 
Probably. You, uh, it's, it's a, there's a lot of decimal places between where we're at now and one run. Yeah, so, that, <laughs> that, that's true. I wonder, even if it came, even if it was worth as much as um, the GDP of the dollar. If it's worth as much as the GDP of the world, I, I mean, I guess we'll do the math right after this and see how much it would be. But Give us your best answer to that. If it was worth the GDP of the world's currencies, how much would one raw be? Yeah. At what point will we can we buy a beer for one raw? And at what point will that be the cause of the deflationary spiral that will end the world economy? Who knows? All right. <laughs> I will catch you guys next week. We will catch you guys next week. And uh, yeah. Peace out, guys.